Hello guys, this is 50 Cup from Gentleman's Club and I'm about to break down the very simple but effective Reese in Reason. Let's go. Okay, so this is the final version of the kind of tutorial track. So you can listen to it and I'll explain how I got there, minus the drums. Let's go. And there we have it, the tune. Now, let's go into the main bass synth and we'll kind of break it down from scratch. So, first of all, reset the patch, obviously. Get it that back down to the basics. So I'm gonna create two sawtooths. One there, oscillator A, one and B. So with sawtooths and making them detuned, you got to uh, turn the sense from right to left and you got to make one negative and one positive simple and this gives you an effect instantly like this which is already okay so to kind of beef it up and make it a bit more interesting you can move one octave higher and then you get something a bit like this Ooh. And that is because it's a little bit too detuned. So I'll move that back down a little bit. And that is already sounding pretty good, but to make it, give it a bit more oomph, I like to add a little bit of, if I can find it, pulverizer. There we go, reset the BST. And then add a bit of dirt to it. out with a little bit more crispy and another thing that everyone uses sawtooth bases for when they make them into a Reese is to make them a bit more subby a bit like liquid DMB and that comes out sounding a bit like this now these filters on the right, the filter A and filter B are assigned to oscillator B and oscillator A. So if you turn this down, the filter is going to go down on both. Subby, not as crazy, not as in your face, nice and subby. Okay, so once you've got the basic Maelstrom Reese synth going, to spice it up, you kind of want to add a bit of reverb, take some bass out in places, put it back in, you get the idea. So what I like to do is obviously use pulverizer, but also if I want to keep the synth in the track, but not have it as impactful earlier on, I like to remove the bass, add a bit of reverb, and I'll let you listen and then you can kind of make up your own mind of how it kind of sounds. And then, once you do that, it kind of adds a little bit more energy into the drop because you've got reverb, it's all airy, and then you get into the drop and it goes. Okay, so that's how you get there. And the only other thing I'd like to add is, obviously extra processing for the Reese is OTT, and that's just a basic compressor, but a very powerful one nonetheless. And I'll show you it without and with, this is without. And then with. And that, my friends, is the power of a compressor. Another way I like to spice up my Maelstrom synth is by adding a semi seven. And it basically creates a harmony live and direct with just two oscillators. And you can hear that in action if I just solo it.
and then it changes to a semi seven and this is how it sounds and this is how it changes up the synth Really just a few little bits and bobs to kind of change up the synth is all you really need to kind of keep the track interesting somewhat. So I've got pitch bend going on. You can see everything that I've uh, automated is in green, a little green highlight. So pitch bend, just bring it in here and it just adds a bit of movement to the bass. And I find that's really important if you just want to kind of make your tune stand out, you want it to sound a bit different, you kind of want to keep on changing things to keep things interesting. Also octaves is a good way to do that, I do that at the end here as well. So Maelstrom is good for Reese's but it's also good for many other basses as well and one bass that is quite commonly used or at least in Maelstrom is the Sawtooth 4 and 16 and the square 16 and square 4. I'm going to kind of go through these sounds for you with you right now. So the square 4, ooh, we have you know this. So the square 4 sounds something like this and in the right key and then even lower. Very squarey but as you change the index here should if I turn the motion down. So motion will move the index like this more. If you have it up, it's going to be going really fast and it kind of creates a very, uh, a lot of movement. But if you turn it all the way down, you've got a clean, straight, non-moving synth. So what you can do with square fours and sawtooth four sixteens as well is find a sweet spot somewhere wherever that might be you might want to turn the sense back to the center for this one so you've got a bit more of a straight sound like so that's straight and as you move this index along you get totally different sounds as you move it along and it gives you a lot of variety as you're working for music to kind of add a bit of spice to your productions. And I'll do I'll show you the same with the square 16 as well. And how it changes as you move it up. And then a classic square four right near the top. And if you add movement to it, a bit of motion. And there's always little tricks you can do with a bit of release as well, so it just kind of bounces. Easy as. Alright, so you've got your straight sounds like this. Very powerful as well. And make it kind of back from a straight sound into more of a Reese sound. If you want to create a different kind of sound from a straight sound, you want to make it into a bit more of a tonal sound. This is how you want to do it. So again, with the sense, get them detuned so they're on opposite ends. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's equal or not, is it will phase nonetheless. So this is what happens with the same sound. So again, quickly, last sound. Now with a greasy tone. just disgusting really isn't it so that's another way to accomplish the same semi 7 sound that I got earlier without actually moving this semi up to 7 you kind of accomplish it anyway through the sort of 4 by moving the index to the right or to be honest you can move it anywhere along this line and you'll get different tones to suit your needs whatever that might be but it's a very powerful tool Maelstrom and a lot can be done just in the sawtooth range and we haven't even got onto squares really, we haven't done anything else. This is just sawtooths, but it kind of shows you how diverse and how much music can make with just one synth like this. Okay, so next I'm going to show you how to make some vibey Reese stuff, not so heavy on the bass, but more kind of 
higher end. Let's see. So I have a subtractor here, reset, and this is the kind of basic initialized patch. And I'll just play it as I'm making it. And this is a little melody that would go on top of the bass. So there you go, your simple start. Click oscillate two, get them nice again, detuned. Get the sense negative and positive, and that should do something like this, which is good. We're halfway there. Now, what I usually do is turn the frequency filter down, resonance up a little bit, like this, and then put a lot of attack on the filter to kind of make it move into the final sound. I might even have it a little bit longer than that. There we go. And that, with a little bit of extra processing, will add quite a lot of oomph to your track if it needs it. So another good way to add vibe to your subtractor synth is add a bit of reverb. And this is kind of the general sound without it. Pretty dead. So what I like to do as well is probably add a tiny bit of tail on the release just to kind of um, see it off a little bit easier so it doesn't kind of abruptly end. And then the simple things in life are usually the best and reverb is your friend so you must use it. And this is how it creates a vibe. And as you get closer to the drop, you kind of want to increase the wetness of the reverb until it reaches a point that you like, basically. Maybe it can be fully wet, maybe it's not wet at all. It depends on many of things to do processing and everything else. But I like to just kind of keep it there. You'll see. This is what it sounds like. Simple as. And that is pretty much it for the Subtractor Reese and the Maelstrom Reese tutorial. So putting all those things together on all the elements I just described, this is what the tune sounds like in its entirety. <laughs> Right, that was the Maelstrom and Subtractor Reese tutorial for Reason. I hope you enjoyed it. I am part of Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you.